Do you want to know some hints and tips about converting your own camper van? Today I'm going to be having a conversation with my partner Naomi <laughs> about a conversation she had with a camper van conversion expert. Now we've been researching camper van conversions for a little while now because as many of you will already know, we are planning the trip starting next year, 2022, to drive from the UK through Europe, zigzagging up and down, continuing to grow our businesses up through Kazakhstan, into China, to the far right hand side, over to America, around America, and then back to, well not back to, but over to Australia. So that's what we're gonna to do today in today's video. So let's jump over to Naomi. Yeah, sure is. So first of all, Naomi, for anyone that is planning on doing a camper van conversion themselves, so this, how did you come across this? How did you go about finding a person willing to give you over an hour of their time speaking about camper vans? So I actually had a networking meeting with a guy from our local BNI network. He'd been a visitor, he's not actually part of the group itself, but he said, oh, I actually know a guy who does camper van conversions, was having a chat about, you know, what we're gonna be doing next year. Oh, I know this guy and this will help you and this, this, this. And I was like, okay, this guy sounds like he's gonna be right up my street, it's gonna help me tremendously. So he put me in touch with this guy and he messaged me back and said, yeah, sure, let's set up a Zoom. So we did and that was pretty much it. Real short, real simple way of being introduced to him. But yeah, that's how I found him. What would the one tip be that you would give to someone if they wanted to try and find someone? Maybe they're not part of a BNI network. Just speak to people because you just never know who they know. The more that you tell someone what it is that you do, the more likely someone's gonna turn around to you and go, oh, I actually know this guy or I know this girl. And you know, it just sort of go from there. So word of mouth when you're doing this kind of thing is the best thing. He did give me some tips on how to actually meet other people in the community as well. So he said to go on Facebook groups, which was really interesting and kind of obvious really when you think about it. He gave me a list of Facebook groups to actually join and be a part of. He says that they're super helpful. Like any question you have, they'll pretty much be able to answer. And he had said to me very often on this call, there's a YouTube video for that. So whatever question you have, you can always have a look at a YouTube video and you'll find something. But in terms of building up that community and just, you know, getting people that are doing what you're doing, Facebook groups is the best way to go about it. Okay, cool. Off the top of your head, can you remember any of those Facebook groups? Put the link in the, um, in the description below for that, but I can't remember the exact specific name, but there's, you can find tons of them. If you just put in camper van conversion on Facebook, you'll find something. But he did say a good tip for this is to actually make sure you put in your location. Cause you can actually get one specifically for, for example, your county, um, for your country, especially, and maybe your city. So it just depends where you are, but make sure you have the location that you're in for the camper van conversions. So you said whilst you're traveling around as well, join groups in those particular countries oh, because nice. they will also be able to collaborate, help you out. Awesome, no, thanks for that Naomi. One other thing I was added, you've told me this before Naomi as well. So on Instagram, van life, I think it's the world's biggest community of van conversion people, people that love their vans. Um, so definitely check that out on Instagram as well. It's, there's millions of people on that. But that is actually who we were going to pay to do our camper van conversion. <laughs> they sent me an email about what they do, their brochure, and I was looking through it, and I was like, oh, these look so nice. Um, and I remember saying to you that, that we need to go with these company because they just look amazing. Got the quote through, and they said it was about 35 grand to start yeah. from. Yeah. And to be fair, like, I thought that's actually a really good price because, you know, you're building a home on wheels. <laughs> And I didn't want to be cheaping out on, on that. You know, I don't want to be just going, oh yeah, okay, cool. We'll just get one for, you know, 10 grand or whatever. And it's done like hundreds and thousands of miles and it's, you know, it's fallen apart. So, you know, they source the van for you. They'll actually do everything as well. You can design it and all sorts. So it's actually a really cool process. So my heart was set on that. And then I spoke to this guy. <laughs> Changed everything. It changed everything. So you mentioned cheaping out. Now, one story you started to tell me when we were talking about this was a guy that converted a van for less than 500 pounds and he travels around the country, the world in this 500 pound conversion. Now, I'm sure that's not everyone's dream <laughs> to, you know, well, maybe it is to be able to get an amazing van for 500 pound. But tell me a little bit more about what, what he told you about the 500 pound van conversion, because that just blew my mind. This guy, he, uh, so again, I didn't speak to this guy who'd done the conversion for 500 pound, I was told on the Zoom call. And it was a YouTube video of, that he's come across. And the funny thing is, is that, I say funny, it's ironic in a way, I guess, um, that this guy recorded himself converting his van for like 500 quid and did a YouTube series on it. He's got a YouTube channel. I'm gonna have to find the name of this guy. And um, 
he said that yeah, it took him five hundred pounds to convert his van. But the thing is, it's not all about luxury for some people. Like he just genuinely wanted a van that he was able to travel around in, shower in, sleep in, and eat in. That's all he wanted. So the the bare basics of this van consisted of a bed, obviously. So he has a bed. And, <laughs> and um, he then said that he built a kitchen cupboard. So he actually just bought the unit from like Ikea or something like that. It cost him like 50 quid, if, if that. And it That's 10% of his budget blown on cupboards. I know, yeah. <laughs> but it was like literally um, like, a, like a chest of drawers type cupboard. It wasn't a kitchen unit. It was just like a, a cupboard. Right. Um, and what he'd done is he'd gone to B&M and he bought a washing up bowl. So a silver like or mixing bowl or something like that like a like a silver bowl he he bought this bowl and he made a sink from it and he drilled a hole in the bottom of it to put the plug in the actual metal bowl he filled up a plastic container and put like a screw tap on the plastic container so that he could fill it with water and use it as a tap rather than actually having plumbing in his van and then he also bought a camping stove um which was like a this dead tiny little thing that you know didn't cook hardly anything but i guess if you're just cooking noodles beans. or beans <laughs> it's fine um so he bought that but then realized he didn't have enough power so then he went and bought a diesel <laughs> a diesel powered like generator like a box battery thing for like 25 quid off ebay or something what? um and uses that to power his stove and that's it He's got a little doggy shower he bought that he bought £15 off Amazon that he sticks to the back of the door so when you open the door the shower's on the inside of the door and he uses that to literally shower off with. What you do is you, you get a like a canister or, or some sort of container mm. to put water in and you basically do that method where you like when you go to steal gasoline from a car you know and you suck the pipe and you get the the, the liquid comes out basically the same principle with the shower you stick it in the water you do this thing and the water comes out and it eventually starts filtering through you just shower with it so yeah that was his van and he loves it he travels everywhere in it he does all these youtube videos about it and he's living a great life <laughs> That's it. It's not always about luxury. Sometimes it is about functionality and as long as it does what you need it to do, why spend stupid money? Now, knowing you, Naomi, I'm confident that we're not going to be doing a £500 van conversion. No. So, so we are going to be doing something a little bit more upscale, would we say? So maybe tell us a little bit about some of the stuff. To tell us, okay, let's start with this. The first thing you've got to do is buy a van, isn't it? So what did you, what did you learn about? Give us some big tips about buying a van. eBay. Okay, cool. If you're going to buy a van, eBay is your best shot. Okay, cool. So eBay, I actually didn't think of that. It's not where I'd have looked. So that's a good bit of information. Check out eBay. So what about in terms of, not necessarily price, because I guess it depends what van you want and you know what model and things like that. Did you get any information around what model to get maybe, what mileage it should have, that sort of thing? Yeah, so he said um, either a sprinter or a crafter. And when he said about buying the van itself, he just, he made a note to say, try and find a van that's under 100,000 miles. Just because obviously at the end of the day, most vans are diesel. I gotta make sure that it's a little bit on the younger side, um, engine wise, and that uh, it's not had too much wear and tear already done to it. Okay, so a bit of a compromise between the amount that you're gonna spend to so maybe pay a bit more to get a slightly younger or lower mileage van, is what you're saying? Now, one thing that we're doing, for those of you that, that have followed this channel for a little while, we're taking our dog with us when we go traveling. So we're gonna obviously be doing events and speaking at events and doing podcasts and continuing this, this YouTube channel as well, whilst growing our businesses, dealing with investments and all that sort of stuff. Now, one thing that people worry about in terms of taking a dog with you, yes, you, you know, leaving the dog in the van at times could concern some people, mainly because of the heat. If you're traveling around countries internationally, there's gonna be areas that you're in where it's hot. And same for me, I'm, I run hot-blooded. So I'm always quite warm anyway, and that's what concerns me about sleeping inside a van, because we insulate it and everything, I appreciate that. What sort of things did he tell you, if anything, about making sure the, the temperature is maintained within the van? Like, how do we go about doing that? The cool thing he said was you can buy vans that already have like a sunroof in them, which is great. So you can always, you can always just have the sunroof open and sort of do that. Also, you can have windows in the van as well if you want to. But the thing he said is you can buy something called a maxi fan and you basically put them at one end of the either end of the van. So one at the beginning, one at the end. And it creates this circular 
motion of, of cooling air so the fans literally counteract each other and create this big circuit the other thing you can also get is like a stand-up aircon unit it's a real thin tall pillar uh, that you can just plug into obviously a power source it comes with like dry ice packs that you mm. have to freeze and then you just put water in this aircon unit so if you really wanted to if for whatever reason you had to leave your animal in the van you could put that on as well just to make sure that it's super super cold and that they're not going to overheat in the van okay cool now that's really helpful so let's let's talk about the overall general build then so obviously there's a bit of preparation to do uh, first of all how long roughly should we expect this to take you've got to remember that me and jay work every day monday to friday i says the evenings are a little bit difficult for us as well because we have other commitments so it's mostly going to be us at the weekends doing it so he just said to me you're actually looking at about seven to ten weeks and i thought he's i i, I thought about six months i did say i was like oh my god really it's like yeah it's not doesn't take long to do it at all so you can actually blast it out in a month if you had the the time to do it okay cool so two and a half months if, if you're just doing your spare time yeah that's pretty good okay cool so well what let's talk about what's involved in that process then so obviously the first step is buy the van we've talked about that ebay um that's what we're looking at there um less than a hundred thousand miles and now what we've got the van now what do we do so there's a few things that you can you can do really i mean you, you can obviously get all the rip out done which you need yeah. to do anyway to start with for me i'd get the van checked out which he didn't say that to me on the phone call i i would take it to somewhere to get it mm. looked at service good idea because if you spend all that time doing it and then it's a knacker and you don't realize yeah exactly you've got, yeah. You've got a knackered camper van <laughs> and then once you you know once you've done that you can then obviously start the build and do what you need to do so rip out to start with insulate it etc etc and then once you've done that you literally just start putting stuff in and start building things the plumbing of it as well is actually quite simple he said it's literally just plastic pipes that you just screw together so you don't even need to worry about all these metal pipes and copper piping and making it all like fancy and neat you don't need to do any of that so it's just plastic piping that you obviously just put into the, the water source and where it needs to go and all of that stuff again there's a youtube video for that so go make sure that you watch different uh, videos on how to do everything and then you just put your final touches onto it and do what you need to do awesome okay so what sort of stuff should we be looking to include in the van then so obviously we're going to want a toilet is there anything we need to know about, about that a shower you know bathroom type thing then there's a kitchen area bedroom is there anything else that stands out as um stuff that was mentioned to you that we should be aware of the shower toilet situation is interesting some showers look amazing and we'll show you some pictures that of showers that we've seen that we like and you'll see the difference and again when you start doing your own research you may already know this anyway but you can have like a proper fitted shower with like tiles and all sorts and it looks really nice sliding doors i've seen some vans with separate toilet and shower some combined so it just depends on your preference really and space the toilet situation is a bit gross because you're in a van and you don't have anywhere for the toilet to go <laughs> so yeah you basically have to just drive over a drain and then just you know get out your van and just sort of yeah let it out <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's a it's a bit gross because you have to drive around carrying that on your van until you can find somewhere to get rid of it which grosses me out however there are options one of them one of them was have it under a sink i was like I'm, I'm okay thanks <laughs> i think i'd i'd just rather just do it in the in the bushes <laughs> but he says you can have it in the under the kitchen sink you can have it in the in the shower unit somewhere or you can have it under your van i think under the van's the best option because you don't want that sloshing around i know it's going to be secured but the thought of that makes me feel a bit sick so uh, yeah under the van for me <laughs> i'm pretty sure i've seen as well um pretty sure I've seen ones where it's like a toilet that's just bolted to the floor the shower usually sits above it so you I guess you could sit down and have a shower whilst you're on the toilet uh, but it looks it looked like I could be wrong it looked like you could just pull out the, the bottom in front of the toilet and that's that's what you could take out to empty I might be wrong there but I saw something that looked like that so it might be that that's an option as well so you don't necessarily need the plumbing in there as such there's just a bucket you can pull out Maybe, I have no idea, obviously this is the first conversation I've had with someone about doing this properly. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't, I actually don't know. Um, like I, Again, like I said, there's, there's tons of YouTube videos to actually 
find out what suits you and how you prefer to do it. Yeah. So yeah, just have a look into it and see which is your preferred method. Okay, cool. So so that's the building side, the toilet side. Um, kitchen, is there anything you need to know about kitchen or bedside? Is there, is there anything that stands out that you think, you know, that, that was a cool tip. This is something good to think about or something good to remember. So with the actual communal area, so your living space, the one thing he did mention was the security aspect of it. Mm. And he said that the reason he said this to me is because he actually knew a woman who was in Mexico, I think. And um, she was out traveling by herself, um, as lots of women do these days, and men. But obviously with women, it's a little bit more scarier because there's a lot of, you know, kidnapping and things. Hungry men. <laughs> a lot of kidnapping going on. So you've got to be more aware. And the security aspect of your van when you're converting it was the cab access to the back of the van. So if you can create create some sort of divider that you can still get to the cab from so that basically your living space is just divided by like a sliding door. Uh, or if you want to leave it completely open, you can leave it completely open. And the reason being is that if you seal off the cab from the from the van the back end of the van you have no means of escape unless you want to get out the back mm. because what happened was this woman these two guys followed her back to her van she got in the in the van locked it up and they started knocking on her door and she couldn't escape the only thing she could do was get out and run off but at that moment they're going to catch up with her they're mm. going to chase her so she stayed in the van they eventually went away thankfully nothing happened but in that instance all she wanted to do was get in the van and drive off and she couldn't because the only way to get to the van was through them mm. so she just he just said sorry that you need to just separate that off so what she actually has done now is she's converted a little like escape hatch in the back of her <laughs> van because she's boarded that up and it's got everything on it already. It's already, to, to remove that would be a big job. So she's just cut a hole <laughs> that she can just dive through if she needs to. And then at least she can just put the keys in and drive off. So I just want to bring, so I just want to bring things back a bit again. Obviously you've got your van, you've started your design process or started your build process of understanding what it is that you need. But I've looked at that Project Van Life uh, Instagram channel and I've looked on YouTube and none of them really seem the same. They're also different. So how do you go about deciding or designing what your van's gonna look like inside and make sure that it's actually all gonna fit? Because I would like a cinema screen in mine, but I can't see it happening. So how can I make sure, before I go ahead and buy a cinema screen, how can I make sure that everything is gonna fit in the van and know exactly how it's gonna look? So the really cool thing that he told me was you can actually use this system or software called SketchUp. And this is free, it's a free software and you can actually create a 3D model of your van. Awesome, um, and it's free, I love free. Yeah, so you can buy a paid version, you get a lot more elements and things that you can add, um, but basically you get access to a library of like images and uh, 3D models of stuff and loads of different things, and you can just create your own van in 3D version. Wow. On like a really basic level, so you know, you can just create the actual inside of it, uh, so like a little rectangle for a bed, you know, a little shower goes here. But the good thing with it is you can put physical measurements in it. So it's to scale. You know that nice. these things will fit. Obviously, you need to make sure you measure everything. Everything that you buy must measure. So making sure that you know how big you want your shower, how big your toilet's going to be, your bed, everything. Um, because otherwise, if you miscalculate something and it's over by even if it's over by an inch, it's gonna, it's gonna make a huge difference because you can't fit it in. And if you measure your bed an inch too big, then it's like, okay, great. So now I'm gonna have to redo everything and get a new bed and all this other stuff, so yeah. Okay, so what was that software called again? SketchUp. SketchUp, we'll add that in the description as well below so you can get access to that. And it's free, awesome, that's, that's great. One thing that I would be concerned about is having all this stuff in my van and other things I want to do, like keeping my phone charged and stuff like that. How, what's the situation with power in a van? Like, surely we can't all just be running off the van's main battery. So, electric. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Solved. Um, <laughs> Next question. <laughs> so, the, obviously you've got the battery of the car, you just buy external batteries. I think they said 240 volts batteries, mm. uh, big square, like almost like car batteries that you can have 
powering everything else yeah. and the good thing is that you can connect it to your engine so the engine charges it anyway okay cool no this has been really helpful naomi is there is there anything else any tip secret trick any amazing bit of information or anything else that you've learned during this time um that would be good just to share with everyone that maybe they've not thought about or considered before i mean there's loads of things that he actually explained to me and there was like little tiny thing little little tiny things that came up on the call but i just can't remember everything so i would just do lots of research on what you need to on what you want to do to your van there's things you can do you can actually convert your cab seats into part of the living space if you wanted to so you can mm. make them swivel so that you can actually have them as part of the seating area and some of them look really nice in that in that way like on the design aspect as well like your mind is your limit you can have your van looking exactly how you want doesn't matter mm. there's no design limit it's if you want it to be polka dot inside make it polka dot inside if you want it to be you know all wooden and rustic with like a nice shiny floor then do that if you want it to be simple white clean modern do it doesn't matter you can do whatever you want bed high bed low bed up bed down seats turns into beds whatever you want it to do you can do it it is completely up to you how you want it to function awesome no, well, thank you very much, that Naomi. I appreciate you not only speaking to the guy. I mean, but this has been awesome. It's been eye-opening for me. There's so many things that I'd not thought of before, you know, with like the hooking the batteries up, solar panels, that sort of, you know, the story situation, just stuff that you just wouldn't think about until it was probably too late. So hopefully this has been helpful to you guys. And equally, like we said, we're going to be traveling around the world, basically, in our van. So we'd love to connect with more of you guys that are all around the world, even if you're not a camper van enthusiast, because we may be coming to a town near you soon. And it'd be good to have that network of people that we can connect with. So that has been it for this video. Thank you guys for tuning in. Like I said, if you've not already subscribed to this channel, make sure you do. We cover a number of areas, including it's gonna be our journey, the camper van being made, but also talking about the businesses that we have and how we're optimizing them, ready for when we set off and go traveling. So that's about investments, crypto, stocks, hedge funds, property, a whole range of things. So we're gonna be sharing that all with you as we do it, so that if you wanna do that as well, you can do it as we do it, not three years down the line once we've done it and it no longer works. So that's it, guys. I've been Jay from Go Nomad. I've been Naomi. Thanks very much. See ya.